Well, it's a it's a good talk to uh, to begin with because um, it's um, this wonderful talk about how to deal uh, with our own minds, as usual, but uh, mostly how when the mind becomes distracted, how to deal with with that and how to um, uplift the mind so that it becomes um, happy and collected and so that the distractions fade away and the the Buddha explains two kinds of meditations that's uh, that's the sutta I was telling you about today the nun's residence it's the topic today <laughs> the nun's residence and um, it's Again, it's not really special that I say that, but it's one of my favorite suttas because <laughs> it has this uh, really, really wonderful way of explaining how to meditate, really in a con concrete, uh, tangible way. And how it, it is talking about the, the four, what the satipatthanas, the four foundations of mindfulness. As you'll see, I'm leaning towards translating satipatthana as the resting places of awareness uh, because um, one of the things that I uh, thought about talking a little bit more about tonight is how these uh, these four uh, resting places of awareness uh, body as body feeling as feeling or sensation as sensation um, mind as mind and mental states as mental states. These are things that happen when we practice properly, when we let go of distractions, when we understand distractions to be disturbing the mind, n making the mind flow out. And when there is no distraction, the mind is simply, it has nowhere to go. So it just is there, collected. And this is not done by focusing on a particular object, but rather by uplifting the mind and letting go with wisdom of the hindrances. And as we do this, awareness arises naturally. It simply is. And these four resting places, they are simply these four things that the Buddha understood that these things we don't need to force our awareness to see they're always there body is always there it's that's the that's the beauty of it and in fact it's something that if you try to not um, for example if you it's hard even to not feel for example body or not feel feelings it's just always there and the thing is that you don't have to direct your mind and to um, force your mind to be aware of these things they are the natural resting places of the mind and when we understand that that's why these these four foundations that the Buddha said these four resting places are such a um, cornerstone of his teaching. It is because if we rest the mind upon simply knowing feeling as feeling, for example, well then there's no there's no distractions, there's no there's no judgment, there's no opinion. It's simply seeing as it is. So there's no craving, there's no tension. And as we practice, we can let go of any distraction that arise and rest our mind upon these, our awareness upon these four. And at that point, it is very pure. It is very, uh, it is composed, it is steady and um, undistracted, like we're going to see. And these instructions are also valid for uh, the four Brahma Viharas, loving kindness or boundless love, boundless compassion, boundless joy, and boundless calm. And so we, um, we can very easily 
uh, use these directions also with the Brahma Viharas. And I'll, I'll do a slight mention while I, I do this talk here. So this is at Sawati and the Venerable Ananda goes to the nun's residence in the morning taking his bowl and robe and sits down on a seat prepared and then the nuns approach him pay loving respect and sit down in front of him then one of the nuns says Bhante Ananda many nuns meditating with a mind well settled in the four resting places of awareness are experiencing wonderful progress so it is sisters so it is sisters Indeed, whosoever, monk or nun, meditates with a mind well settled in the four resting places of awareness, it can be expected that they will experience wonderful progress. Then the Venerable Ananda taught the Dhamma to the nuns. Having taught, sparked, uplifted and gladdened them, he stood from his seat and left. In the afternoon, having walked for alms in Sawati, the Venerable Ananda approached the awakened one, paid loving respects and sat down to one side and said, all that had taken place. And the Buddha replies, so it is, Ananda, so it is. Indeed, whosoever, monk or nun, meditating with a mind well settled in the four resting places of awareness, it can be expected that they will experience wonderful progress. And what are the four? What are the four resting places? Here, Ananda, one meditates, observing body as body, intent, fully aware and present, Letting go of judgments and opinions. Now this is what the Buddha said uh, called wise awareness or right mindfulness. But this is simply... I also see it as just clean observation. <laughs> Pure observation. Not not criticizing, not judging, not having an opinion about whatever is happening with body. It's not, not thinking, oh, my body, or this is happening to body. Simply, oh, this is body. There is body. And this is, in fact, this is how it is explained in the Satipatthana Sutta. It's like, just enough so that there is awareness, there is body. That's it. So that's all we we are doing really as one meditates observing the body as body established upon body bodily discomfort arises one's mind becomes lazy or distracted outwardly sounds familiar <laughs> and um, now this is the, the distraction coming in then one should apply one's mind to an uplifting object. When one's mind has, is applied to an uplifting object, gladness arises. And so here I simply will briefly mention that this is the closest thing that the Buddha uh, taught to an object of meditation. And this is something that has become very, very common in Buddhism because of one-pointedness, one-pointed, um, uh, one-going awareness on one single thing, one object. And this is, uh, this is that famous word nimitta here, which is translated as sign, but um, also is valid as object. And here the, the Buddha is explaining how to apply the mind, how to direct the mind using a sign, using an object. But as we will see, uh, this doesn't last for very long. In fact, this is just a tool. But 
as soon as we can, we let go of that object. And it's very clear here. And this object has a purpose, is to gladden the mind, is to uh, make the mind joyful. From gladness comes joy. Joyful in mind, one's body is relaxed. Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness. And a happy mind becomes collected naturally. And now there's the going beyond the thoughts. One reflects, this is the reason why I have applied my mind. My intention was accomplished. I can now let it go. One lets it go and neither thinks nor imagines. And one knows, not thinking nor imagining, I am happy, present, uh, present inwardly. And here, just this is, um, this thinking and imagining is the vitaka, vichara here, the first stages of jhana which um, technically this would not be possible right now if we were thinking in terms of absorption jhana but really the buddha is clearly like black and white saying how to <laughs> how to meditate when there is using thinking and imagining bringing up the object for example this is the the time where we think of somebody that we love when we bring up the feeling of loving kindness the puppy or the kitten whatever works for you this is we we bring it up to bring up the feeling to bring up the gladness to bring up the joy and this is jhana this is using the first factors of jhana to get into meditation and this is very practical advice about the first uh, level of meditation in fact on another occasion, one meditates, observing feeling as feeling, intent, fully aware and present, letting go of judgments and opinions. As one meditates, observing feeling as feeling, established upon feeling, simply the mind resting upon feeling, bodily discomfort arises, one's mind becomes lazy or distracted outwardly. Then one should apply one's mind to an uplifting object. Once one's mind is applied to an uplifting object, gladness arises. From gladness comes joy. Joyful in mind, one's body is relaxed. Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness. And a happy mind becomes collected naturally. I've been repeating these sequence quite often so <laughs> I think you're quite familiar with that one but I will continue repeating it because that's how we understand the nature of the mind and how it becomes collected through uplifting through gladness through joy and tranquility and you were uh, wondering where where that relaxing is well it is in this particular uh, sequence also uh, this is in Pali this is um, uh, piti manasa kayang pasambati so when when the mind is joyful the body pasambati is the the, that verb of uh, becoming tranquil, becoming relaxed. What Damarato translates as being passive, kind of like the same root in, in English, but um, the thing is that there is a slight danger here because uh, the relaxing is also in that samatha vipassana that awareness and letting go or uh, w 
observing the mind, which is vipassana, that, that we in before the passa, that passa is observing, but we is a special way. It's like observing the mind. That's all it is. The Buddhist teaching is all about understanding the mind. And we understand the mind through tranquility, through deepening um, relaxation can be a tricky word <laughs> because it can be uh, understood as some kind of you know just relaxing casually but it's a aware kind of relaxation it's relaxing the tension that arises from the distractions and this is this goes to a very, very uh, profound level in the mind, where it's even uh, in the sphere of um, neither perception nor non-perception. There will be uh, barely any awareness, and when a perception arises, we, because the mind is so calm and so steady and um, unwavering that only a perception arising which means comes with the basis I I see this there is this really subtle thing happens it arises and it comes with tension always and so it's not like a leaning back and taking a nap relaxing but <laughs> it's really more uh, letting go more than relaxing or calming and gladdening see the there's and in fact these words are really tricky to translate in Pali because they're very close together tranquility and joy there's a few words um, that uh, it could be both so it's it's interesting <laughs> One reflects, this is the reason why I have applied my mind. My, my intention was fulfilled. I can now let it go. One then lets it go and neither thinks nor imagine. And one knows, not thinking nor imagining, I am happy, present, inwardly. And this uh, observation of feeling as feeling, uh, w when we do the guided loving-kindness meditation, um, I often uh, kind of integrate it. Uh, this is kind of integrated to how I will uh, guide uh, loving-kindness meditation. Because when we bring up the feeling of love, for example, uh, we bring it up. But we don't have judgments about it. We don't have opinions. We don't, uh, we don't really attach our mind to any particular aspect of it. It's fully open. And so it is looking also at feeling as feeling. We are bringing it up, but in the most purest way that we can without getting so involved in it. And that's how it gets to be really steady and open. There will be all kinds of distractions, but as we learn to let go of them, relax and release the tension, we get to, in fact, experience love in a very clean and pristine way, which is very close to how the Buddha is describing observing feeling as feeling, observing love as love. On another occasion, one meditates observing mind as mind, intent, fully aware and present, letting go of judgments and opinions. As one meditates observing mind as mind, established upon mind, bodily discomfort arises. His mind, one's mind becomes lazy or distracted outwardly. Then one should apply one's mind to an uplifting object. Having done so, gladness arises. From gladness comes joy. Joyful in mind, one's body is relaxed. Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness, and a happy mind becomes collected naturally. One reflects, 
this is the reason why I have applied my mind. My intention has been fulfilled. I can now let it go. One then lets it go and neither thinks nor imagine, and one knows, without thinking or imagining, I am happy, present, inwardly. And another really wonderful thing about this sutta is that there's a lot of reference to happiness, gladness, joy. You know, really, uh, it's covered quite thickly with it. So, <laughs> um, it's a, definitely a, a reason why it's uh, such a wonderful sutta to keep in your back pocket <laughs> when you're meditating and um, to keep close because it's so clear in this sutta how you know how the practice works and it's not like it's directly from the Buddha so on another occasion one meditates observing mental states as mental states anything that happens in the mind it's just what it is intent fully aware and present letting go of judgments and opinions as one meditates observing my mental states as mental states established upon mental states bodily discomfort arises one's mind becomes dull or distracted outwardly now the natural samadhi then one should apply one's mind to an uplifting object having done so gladness arises from that gladness comes joy joyful in mind one's body is relaxed Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness, and the happy mind becomes collected naturally. One reflects, this is the reason why I have applied my mind. My intention has been accomplished. I can now let it go. One then lets it go and neither thinks nor imagine, and one knows, without thinking nor imagining, I am happy present internally this is how there is development by application ananda so uh, bhikkhu bodhi translates this as uh, development by uh, direction directed d directing the mind which is also very good and how is there development without application and this is really how the buddha taught one does not apply one's mind outwardly to an object, to anything. One understands, my mind is not applied outwardly. It is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied, before and after. Meditating, observing the body as body. Intent, fully aware and present, I am happy. That's it. <laughs> what more can you want? <laughs> Just happy. And so this is also how we're developing this loving kindness. It's just having this beautiful, broad, expansive loving kindness everywhere. But without uh, always trying to bring up an object. It's just simply as it is. And then it, it simply fades away. And if we follow the Brahma Viharas all the way, for example, into the higher stages of meditation, then it simply, at the end, it simply becomes mind by itself, uh, whatever we do, because the mind just becomes so pure. It doesn't, uh, the Brahma Viharas become a little too heavy. And then observing mind as mind, simply happy, but not excited happy, just happy, liberated. <laughs> It says it here, one does not apply one's mind outwardly, one understands my mind is not applied outwardly, it is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied before and after, meditating, observing, feeling as feeling, intent, fully aware and present, I am happy. One does not apply one's mind outwardly, one understands, my mind is not applied outwardly. Why? Because when we do so, we notice there's a little tension. There's, the mind feels better when it's not applied. 
It is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied before and after, meditating, observing mind as mind, intent, fully aware and present. I am happy. One does not apply one's mind outwardly. One understands, my mind is not applied outwardly. It is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied, before and after. Meditating, observing mental states as mental states, intent, fully aware and present. I am happy. This is how there comes to be development without application. Ananda, I have taught you development by application and development without application. What should be done by a teacher for his students, holding their best interest at heart, out of loving compassion, that I have done for you, Ananda. There are these roots of trees, Ananda. There are these empty huts. Meditate, Ananda. Do not be neglectful lest you become remorseful when the time has passed. This is my advice to you." That is what the Awakened One said. With an uplifted mind, the Venerable Ananda delighted in the Awakened One's words. And so, this wonderful sutta ends. And, uh, what a great way to begin meditation <laughs> and to now put this into practice. And so I invite you to close your eyes and take a comfortable position. Any posture in which you feel comfortable, you feel at ease. That is most important for us to be able to bring up love for others. We first need to feel happy for ourselves, to be comfortable. Whatever happened today or last week, leave it all behind. Come into this present moment, present awareness, light, without anything weighing on the mind. starting fresh. Not thinking about tomorrow, letting go of the past. simply smiling and relaxing. Letting go of any kind of tension that you could have picked up along the way. Do you feel any tension in your body? It could be anywhere. Can you dissolve it, let it go?
and simply smile. Smiling is an uplifting object. And so this is why we smile. Gladdening the mind. Notice the relief that comes from letting go, relaxing, and smiling. Whenever you feel ready, whenever you feel like you've settled in a little bit, perhaps you're a little bit more aware of your body, of your sensations. The mind is coming to itself. You can bring up the feeling of loving-kindness inside your heart. That warm, radiant feeling. Perhaps even tingly sensation in the center of your chest. running through your whole body. Perhaps you may wish to use an uplifting object to bring up the feeling if it is hard to bring up on its own. Perhaps a sentence like, I love you. May all beings feel this love that I have. May all beings be happy.
whatever the object or the sentence doesn't matter it is only a tool to gladden the mind to uplift the mind with loving kindness And allow your love to be universal, boundless, to simply ooze out into all of space, before you, behind you, to your left, to your right, above and below, everywhere without exception. Beautiful, open, bright, free. without judgments or opinions. not trying to push it out or force it in any kind of way, simply allowing it to just be. To bloom on its own and smile. Whenever the mind gets distracted, notice the tension that arises as soon as the distraction arises in your mind and in your body. And relax that, release it. Let go of the tension release the distraction. This is how we apply the third noble truth, 
We let go of trouble. Letting go of tension. And the third step of wise practice is to then bring up the wholesome, come back to the loving kindness, the boundless love with a smile. And then maintain for as long as it is possible. That is the fourth step of wise practice. And so continually doing this, noticing the distraction and the tension that comes with them, the first step, then letting it go, the second step, coming back to the wholesome, the boundless love with a smile as the third step and continually practicing in this way. Knowing mental states as mental states, whether it's a hindrance that arises, no need to have opinions and judgments about it. It's okay. It's in the mind anyways. It has to be purified. It's a good thing that it comes up so we can deal with it. And this is how we let go of our previous conditionings, previous tensions that we've accumulated. And this is how we open up to the wholesome and become very happy. and truly feel this genuine feeling of love. doesn't matter external conditions, just love. No matter if people hurt you or upset you, just love. Love will always help you.
taking the firm decision to only respond with loving compassion, to forgive the distractions in the mind, Even if you are an advanced meditator, this meditation on boundless love will always teach you, always show you some things that you perhaps didn't notice. never to be underestimated a wonderful skill to have
truly this is how we see progress in the human nature on this beautiful path that the Buddha taught. Is when we can see compassion being developed in people. Selflessness, wisdom, and loving compassion. Surely this is a way we can measure someone's progress on the path. Developing love by practicing love. Developing compassion by practicing compassion. Developing joy by practicing joy. Anumodana Rejoicing in all living beings joy and happiness Sabhe satha, sabhe panna, sabhe bhuta, sabhe pukala. Sabhe atta bhava pariyapanna. Sabhe tiyo, sabhe purisa. Sabhe ariya, sabhe anariya. Sabhe Deva, Sabhe Manusa, Sabhe Vinipatika. And we are on to Abhya Paja on to Aniga on to Sukhiata Nang Pariyarantu Dukha Muchantu Yatalada Sampatito Mawi Gachantu Kamasaka Purati Maya Disaya Pachi Maya Disaya 
Uttaraya disaya dakinaya disaya. Purati maya nudisaya pechi maya nudisaya. Uttaraya nudisaya dakinaya nudisaya. Sabe sata sabe panna sabe buta sabe pugala. Sabe atta bawa paria panna. Sabe tio sabe purisa. Sabe aria sabe anaria. Sabe dewa sabe manusa sabe wini patika. Awe down to a bia page on to a nigga on to sukiata nang pariaran to to kamuchantu yatalada sampatito ma we got chantu kamasaka Imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati patiya buddhang pujimi Imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati patiya dhang mang pujimi Imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati patiya sangang pujimi Adha imaya pati padaya jati jara bhyadi maranang ha parimuchi sami Idang te punyang asawa ka yang waham ho tu. Idang me punyang nibana sa pachayo ho tu. Mama punya bagang sabasatanang bajimi. Te sabhe me samang punya bagang labantu sadu sadu sadu